Hello, my name is Justin Johnson and I manage developer experience over at Macrometa. Today, I'm gonna to be introducing you to the Macrometa Global Data Network. It's a platform for developers to build completely globally distributed applications that maintain state and consistency for the data at all locations. We have 10 locations on our platform as a service, the self-serve, and all 10 locations are run on Linode servers. Linode's a great partner for us. We chose them because of the ease of using their um, services, their fantastic support, and reasonable pricing. What I'm gonna do here is build a super basic app on the platform. It's 100% serverless. We should be able to go really quickly. And then I'm gonna walk you through a uh, crypto demo that we've put together. That's an arbitrage for buying and selling Bitcoin for uh, small amounts of gains. So I'm logged in here to Macrometa on the screen. You can see these, uh, these green dots. These are all Macrometa locations that are uh, on the Linode platform. On this left-hand side here, I'm logged into our Fremont location. I actually reside in Oakland, California, so this is the one that's closest to me. And then on the right-hand side over here, I am logged into our Singapore location. So to get started with this demo, I'm first gonna create a collection. You can think of a collection as a database or a table. We have different models. Uh, right here we have a key value store, a document store, so this is like a Redis, this is like a Mongo. Um, we have a feature complete Dynamo um, uh, data model here, and then you can create graph edges uh, for a graph database to do semantic analysis on top of all of your data. I'm gonna go ahead and create a document collection. We're going to make a very basic address book app, and I'm gonna call this collection addresses. Great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show over here that that address uh, collection, addresses, has been replicated to Singapore um, just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some data to this collection. I'm gonna to go to our query editor here. I'm going to grab this. This is just a bunch of uh, addresses. Our query language is a combination of SQL. We're gonna mash up with some JavaScript. I'll get into why we have the JavaScript in there a little bit later. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and run this query. So this array here means that we got a 200 and we actually wrote all this data to our addresses table. Go over here in addresses. You can see that our data did write. Check over here. Got it in here too. So now I'm gonna go ahead and query this data. Great, so this query uh, just returned all the data that I had in there. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the uh, uh, results here. Runtime, execution time, we're looking wicked fast. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a query worker. A query worker is a saved query that is cached to all locations. What it allows you to do, let's call this get addresses. What it does is it creates a REST endpoint that you can use similar to say like a uh, serverless function, but it's a database query. Now you can see in here we have our, our get addresses query. I'm gonna go ahead and make this an API endpoint. This query that I just wrote and saved is now an API endpoint that we can uh, integrate into any of our applications. If I go back to here, I won't go through this whole thing, but you can create a variety of, of query workers and in a matter of minutes, you can create a, a complete CRUD API for a application. Now, all of those queries are cached across the entire network. 
What that means is that whenever your users query your database, they're going to be querying that data um, close to where they reside, getting amazingly fast results. Now I'm going to talk about streams. So all collections uh, can be a stream, and a stream is pub sub or queuing. A, a collection stream will publish out all uh, um, events that have happened within this collection. What I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and edit Joseph Smith to say Joseph Johnson. I'm going to save that. You can see over here in Singapore, we just got a message that this, um, this name, this last name got turned to Johnson. Let me just go ahead and save that. There you go. Now it's John So. So you can uh, subscribe to these changes however you see fit. It comes automatically and magically. You can create other streams that aren't linked to a table. So if you're going to say consume data from a third party API into your database, you can create a stream for that. Now we're gonna talk about full applications, stream workers. So stream workers are programming against uh, all the services that we have. So it's a combination of uh, queries, streams, and then you can do complex event processing on top of that. And this is where we're gonna talk about this crypto trading app. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the GUI of the crypto app. Great. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with Fremont because that's where I'm at. It. Oops. So what this application is doing is we're tracking the price of Bitcoin in three different exchanges, along with the value of currency in three different locations. So we have the, uh, the value of Bitcoin here in the US in dollars, we have in Europe in Euro, and we have it in Japan in Yen. Now we're tracking these changes so that we can make microtransactions from a single wallet so that when the value of the say dollar in Yen and Bitcoin fluctuates so that the value of Yen is lower than the value of the dollar, then we could sell uh, uh, some dollars and buy with yen, um, basically making uh, a bunch of microtransactions to make money and arbitrage. You can see all the data coming in. We also have a uh, macro meta search here. And I'm going to walk through um, the code. Now, this uh, it's really important to be as fast as humanly possible here because these changes happen quickly. And if you don't make a decision for a purchase or sell fast enough, you can lose money. So this entire app maintaining state across three locations in the world is built in about 160 lines of code. This is where the JavaScript comes in. So you're not just able to write uh, queries to the database. You're also able to write business logic with JavaScript. What we're doing here is we're using the APIs of the various um, uh, exchanges. We're syncing them to a, uh, a stream. And then we're doing some fancy work on the stream to uh, give you those charts and graphs and make our decisions about buys and sells. So here is where we're initiating the trigger to get the results. And then this is the logic to actually understand what's happening with, uh, with these APIs and get our front end working. So there you have it. We've built out a, um, a simple, completely geo-distributed backend for an address book. And here I've shown you an example of a very, very feature rich application built in about 160 lines of code that is making real time decisions 
about real-time data across three regions of the globe, um, we're talking sub 50 millisecond response, uh, round trip response times here. If you're interested in checking it out yourself, we have a free developer tier that has access to the entire platform. Would love for you to come check it out and reach out to me. I'm Eloff, E-L-O-F on Twitter or Justin at macrometa.com. Thanks so much.